You've seen it before, haven't you? Dom, how long have we been doing this? Once more unto the bridge, dear friends. Again and again and again until we're both dead. Hello and welcome to You've Seen It Before, movie reviews and connections of mind. Eternals is the latest feature film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and is directed by Chloe Zhao and stars a whole host of people, uh, including but not limited to uh, Kit Harington, Angelina Jolie, Selma Hayek, Kumail Nanjiani, so many others. Uh, and this film focuses around a group of immortal beings known as the Eternals who have been sent to Earth in long in the past uh, by a celestial being in order to defend the people of Earth from a uh, alien species known as the Deviants, a group of animals who want nothing more than to eat all, uh, to kill all intelligent life on Earth. Now, after having spent several thousand years on Earth and thinking their mission is over, they find out that their mission may not have been as over as they thought. Now, this video review will contain spoilers of Eternals, but I'll keep that towards the end. I'll be doing my spoiler-free thoughts uh, first up, but just so you know, there will be spoilers later on in this review. But first off, let's get into some spoiler-free thoughts on Marvel's The Eternals. Is it a worthy addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Is it worth seeing in the theaters? Um, I would say this is worth seeing in the theaters just for the visuals alone. Um, it's sort of a sad state of affairs when the one of the big highlights of this film is that, oh, a lot of it was shot on location, whereas a lot of movies these days are shot on you know green screen studios or digital projection studios, where a lot of this... Uh, a large portion of this film was filmed on location, and it shows. It looks gorgeous. The cinematography in this film is great. It goes. You got um, a wide variety of you know uh, color palettes. You know from you know the wastes of uh, of uh, uh, the plains of South Dakota to the warm uh, desert climate of you know Babylon uh, to the rainforest uh, to it. There's just uh, so a good variety of places that these, uh, that these characters go and it all looks great. The set design as well. Um, I very much buy that these characters, um, they have a, uh, a distinct look to them and it looks genuine. It looks like it's been, uh, it's like the product of centuries and, and, thou and eons and it, uh, and it looks gorgeous. I, I can't praise the visual effects enough in this movie. The story, however, I think is where this uh, this film falls well flat of the, the bar set by uh, MCU films. And really, I think uh, it's not necessarily um, uh, a uh, the movie's fault, in a sense, because A, the bar for Marvel Cinematic Universe films have been set so high, uh, when a movie falls, uh, falls short of that bar, it can feel like it uh, fails more than it might necessarily actually fail but in this case it also has the double whammy of this is an origin story for these characters we've never seen the Eternals before so this is our first uh, uh, first introduction to who these characters are and as far as I know I don't really uh, know a whole lot about these characters other than you know they're thousands of years old yes and they influence history however uh, you know uh, aside from the shots that you see in the uh, in the trailers you don't really get uh, a whole sense of what they did through all the thousand years of human history, aside from, you know, they stayed put uh, to a certain, uh, they didn't interfere except uh, when they actually do. Uh, again, no spoilers, but yes, there are certain, uh, the, the whole point of these characters is that, uh, you know, with, with names like, you know, uh, Icarus, Gilgamesh, um, and other, uh, other uh, others, there's, yeah, you can tell that these are characters that they influenced human history. And yet, this movie doesn't take advantage of it, uh, in my opinion, to nearly the degree that I would have found interesting. Also, the main focus of the story is not necessarily, well, yes, the main external, you know, world-ending stakes is the deviance, and uh, as well as the uh, the other, uh, as well as other things. But really, the main focus of uh, of conflict in the story is between the Eternals' characters. It's sort of a family dynamic that's got going on between these uh, these characters and. These uh, these people they um, uh, they have to have a certain amount of chemistry uh, with each other in order for this to work, and I don't really get a lot of chemistry from these people, uh, especially um, between 
uh, uh, Cersei and Icarus, played by uh, Gemma Channa and uh, Richard Madden, respectively, they're supposed to be in love, have been in love for, you know, thousands of years, and then they, uh, they have a falling out, uh, you know, 500 years ago or something. I get, uh, even in scenes where we're uh, flashing back to, you know, thousands of years in the past, I get no chemistry at all from these people. And uh, there's also, you know, uh, like friendships and rivalries that are supposed to be going together and, you know, people like, sometimes they split off uh, alone, sometimes they pair off. And again, these are the characters that have been together for like, you know, hundreds if not thousands of years uh, in these pairs. It's like, I, I get nothing from these people. Like, they, it feels like they just met on set for the first time in a lot of cases. Sometimes it fits through and I feel like the, the bright spot of this whole uh, movie is surprisingly enough, uh, Camille Nanjiani as, uh, Kingo. Uh, he's probably the best character in this whole movie, however, um, he's really kind of, uh, delegated as, you know, the quipster, and, yeah, you know, other, uh, other characters quip as well, but, um, really this, uh, this character, even when he has, like, serious moments, I don't think they necessarily land that well, because a lot of what, uh, what, um, you know, what impact these characters have is dependent on their history together, and we didn't see that history. A lot of it, it's all implied, and I don't know if it's implied very well. Also, you know, the main conflict of this, uh, uh, the way the story goes, it, I just found it kind of boring, in a sense. And, you know, these are like world-ending stakes. Even the world-ending stakes were kind of boring, just because... They're so new, it's like, I know ba basically nothing about these characters, and it's just, you know, another disposable villain. Uh, granted, you know, at the end of the movie does set up things that may uh, pay off more uh, later on, but for a first impression movie, I didn't get a whole lot out of it as far as the story goes. And I'm sorry, that's just, this is very disappointing to me. And I will say, I, uh, I didn't go into this movie with a whole host of anticipation uh, unlike a lot of other MCU uh, properties that I've gone into, this felt the most like an obligatory watch to me as far as an MCU fan, and I didn't come out of it feeling like it was worth my time, to be honest. And, you know, just to kind of put this in perspective, you know, uh, you can see behind me I buy a lot of uh, physical media, and when new mo I track very closely when new movies uh, come out on, on Blu-ray, and I tend to buy them, uh, you know, relatively... On the day that they come out or very quickly after that this one however i am not really going to rush out and buy i think and the last time uh, i did that uh i did end up buying uh in, in a series of films that i felt like i needed to get out of obligatory uh, of you know as a completionist to my collection to a sense the, the most recent example of, that, of, of a movie that did that for me was jurassic world fallen kingdom now uh, between the two movies, do I think that Eternals is better than Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? E uh, they both have the pros and cons, I think, but if, uh, if I was going to put on one to watch, I think I'd kind of watch Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Now, if this seems like I'm kind of dumping on this, you know, like there's nothing good in this movie at all, don't get me wrong, there's so much, there are good things in this movie. Like I said, um, Kamal Nanjiani and, uh, is a good, uh, is probably the best character in this movie. He, and a lot of the quips that land is actually really good. And the, uh, like I said, the set design is gorgeous. Like, uh, in one of the flashback scenes, they go to, um, uh, they're in Babylon. And having actually seen, um, gone to, uh, to the museum, uh, to Berlin to see the, uh, the reconstruction of the, of the ruins of the gates of Babylon, they recreate the Babylon perfectly, in my opinion. And as far as the digital set goes, that, it looks great. However, uh, and uh, aside from that, you know, as far as from a visual spectacle, um, this might be better if you just leave, watch it on mute, to be perfectly honest, because you're not missing a whole lot uh, character-wise. So, yeah, if I was going to give uh, Eternals a letter grade, I would say this is a uh, C-, minus, in my opinion. This is not the worst Marvel movie by any degree. However... This is just kind of boring to me, and this is kind of a disappointment. Maybe it'll grow on me uh, in future rewatches, and when we get uh, when the events of this film are put into context, maybe these characters will grow into into new facets. It's kind of like how Thor did, where even though I enjoyed the first Thor movie, and I don't think Thor: Dark World is absolute dumpster fire, um, he did get better as his movies went along. So 
again, for, as uh, have hope for the future, but as far as you know, first impressions go, this movie this was a disappointment to me. So, those are my spoiler-free thoughts on Eternals. Now let's get into some spoiler analysis as to certain uh, plot developments and character arcs that may seem familiar to you and where you may have seen them before. Now, this whole uh, this whole plot, uh, the, the whole uh, the crux of the conflict, the you know, the big twist in this uh, in this film is that the Eternals were sent to ensure that mankind's population could expand to a certain point, where uh, wherein they they have the enough energy in the life of, on Earth so that the celestial Tiamat uh, uh, growing inside of Earth would you know Earth's basically an egg for the celestial and then they hatch and everyone on Earth will die. And it's up to the Eternals then having, uh, they become attached to Earth and now they're going to defend it and then they have to, you know, kill uh, or put sleep and or kill uh, Tiamat, which they eventually have to end up killing Tiamat uh, by turning into stone. Um, this is kind of reminiscent of um, kind of Moana in a sense, where, you know, Moana's trying to fight uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the big island that's going to, uh, to, uh, to wreck the world. Or, and also... Um, Wrath of the Titans, where um, uh, Perseus is trying, uh, is trying, and, the God, and Zeus and Hades are trying to stop um, uh, Cronus from uh, uh, coming out of Tartarus from inside the Earth and destroying mankind that way. Both of uh, both films, in which also focus on um, ancient mythology, uh, so there's something to be said about that as a parallel as well. Also, the fact that. Um, uh, this film, the characters, again, it's probably a comics thing, but also these characters, you know, they're immortal beings that have, uh, in, have put, uh, influenced uh, human mythology uh, to an extent. Um, you could say that that is, um, this made me think of, well, A, all of Stargate pre uh, pretty much, but also the Star Trek, ep the original series episode, uh, Requiem from Methuselah, where an immortal being um, uh, is you know, was born in uh, you know ancient Mesopotamia, you know three thousand BC or whatever, and he uh, he then takes on the persona of various historical figures throughout history, such as you know Solomon, Da Vinci, all those things. So there's something to be said about that as well as a parallel here. Also, I mean, you can kind of also play into you know how uh, Kingo uh, he's uh, he's a movie star and he's uh, you know. He's his own grandfather uh, and grandfather in these movies. He's part of a dynasty, but of course they're all obviously him, uh, starring for you know in movies for a hundred years, pretty basically. So there's some uh, there's some parallels in that front. Um, there are probably others that I missed, but you know as far as um, uh, other spoiler insights, this movie goes. Um, also, as far as the chemistry goes, I think you know Sprite and Icarus. You know, Sprite, uh, like, there are interesting ideas in this film that I really wanted to explore, like, you know, the, aside from, you know, how these Eternals uh, influence human history despite, you know, not interfering, how that would work. Also, you know, Sprite being trapped in a child's body but wanting to uh, to experience, you know, uh, adult love is, uh, and all, um, adult experiences on that. Uh, being trapped in a child's body for eternity, that's uh, an interesting concept, that, but they don't necessarily focus on it nearly as much as I think that they could have. Like, that's an interesting idea that I wish they could have gone in more, but uh, also the fact that they had to keep reminding us, oh yeah, Sprite's in love with Icarus, can't you tell? It's like, no, I couldn't tell the first time, and I couldn't tell the second time, they had to remind me. It's like, it both times just kind of came out of nowhere. So that's why I kind of thought that you know, these characters have basically no chemistry. Those are my main thoughts on, um, on Eternals. I, try, I don't want to really want to dump on this movie because obviously it took a lot of effort and, you know, the, I don't know who's, uh, who's at fault for, uh, for the film's failings, but yeah, as far as an MCU film, I'm just kind of disappointed with it. But let me know what you think of Eternals. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, what about my analysis? Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate whatever audience I can get. Uh, be sure to look for my next movie review, which I believe on the docket is uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife, with co which comes out November 19th, I believe. As well as that week, uh, I'm going to be starting my, um, my reaction series to each and every episode of Season 4 of Star Trek Discovery. So look forward to that uh, on my channel. And if you liked this video or any other video on my channel, please give me a like, share, and especially subscribe. I'd very much appreciate it. Again, thank you so much for watching. You guys are the best. But just remember, 
there is nothing new under the sun, and yes, you have seen it before.